Okay then. Whew. Don't want me, I'm a little nervous here. A uh, little admission here that uh, I'm not usually used to speaking in front of folks. Uh, but thank you all for coming. Thank you so much. And I uh, hope you, uh, you get, get a little insight and such about uh, where, I get, where my positivity comes from uh, and you know, where you can find your own positivity from within. All right, so uh, well, as you might have heard, my name is Sunny Dingo, and uh, uh, I'm a Dingo. I've uh, been a, a long time first year and uh, been on Walkabout in Furry Fandom for about three and a half years. And even though I've been only around for that, that short time, it feels like I've always been here. You know what I love about Furry? I love the creative energy. And what I think it, it contributes to that is that <coughs> Furry fandom should feel like a safe place where we can uh, grow and gain confidence, define, explore, and improve ourselves. With the freedom to try and learn, express who we are, in a community where we can feel we belong. That's the, that's that's. I want to share that feeling. That's what I've got out of uh, out of fandom, and that's that's the fandom I want. And with that, I wanted to share the story of how I got here. But first, uh, yeah. <laughs> <Pardon> me, <yes. laughs> I want to share the story of how I got here, where I found my positivity, and <laughs> how you can maybe help uh, find your own positivity from within. within. And also, when you want something uh, with all your heart, just go out and ask the universe for it. Work toward it, and don't worry how it's going to come to pass. The opportunities will present themselves. And uh, for me, this is true. This is how it happened for me. But first, let me share the story of a shy kid who loved cartoons and mascots. Long ago, in the early days of Murray, before Murray, he always wanted to, he, he loved mascots and, and cartoons and always wanted to be a mascot. Yeah. But he was incredibly shy. You know, the shy kid fighting the center of attention. How, how is it possible? He would watch, he would watch Looney Tunes cartoons and think, oh, those, those crazy cartoons. What would it be like to be one of them? So when he went, when he went to uh, university, he, uh, in a trembly voice, he went to the, uh, the sports department and said, uh, How do I be the mascot? And they told, they told him, but he just ran out of there, tail between his legs, just, just completely shouted. He was like, I don't want to do any, have anything to do with this. But then he found Furry. And he found that, uh, you know, that, uh, about that for you, about person that you can make your, you can be your own mascot, make your own mascot. But, but how is he going to do it? So, late one night, this starry night, he, he made it, he looked up at the full moon up on him and he made a wish. He said, I wish it was fun. I want a mascot. And then this guy smiled down upon him Send his dream for the fire in But for now, it was just a dream. It was just, how do I make it real? He would see the guy in his head. He's like, what do I look like? How do, how do you make me real? And so he learned how to build, build pursuits, and he built himself his own mascot. wasn't his persona. It was, it was just a character that he could be and pretend to be. And, and he filled his coyote with, with all the confidence that he wished he had. Once he became real, the coyote 
Right, look at the... I have the microphone the right here. So once it was real, the coyote reached out a paw to the, to the kid and he said, well, let's have some fun. Let's go. Let's go on our adventure together. They went to many conventions and meets and such, and, uh, and over time, the, the, the coyote helped this, uh, this, this shy kid get more more confident and sure of himself, lively and outgoing and fun. Then the kid had an opportunity to be a professional mascot with an actual sports team. Uh, he he uh, heard about auditions and, and such and he was saying to the coyote, I don't know, I'm scared. I, I, I'm really scared. And the coyote was like, you know, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Go for it. Go on. So he went to the audition, but he didn't win. Uh, he was invited to be the apprentice, the, uh, the escort, the uh, apprentice for the, the pro mascot. And uh, over the course of the summer, he realized, he, he got to see backstage how busy and crazy and chaotic and uh, high pressure it is being backstage and being, back, being part of the show at a professional sports event and repeat that about 80 times over the course of the summer that uh, he can get pretty, pretty wiped out. The following season, he had the opportunity to, uh, to actually be the mascot. And this was even worse, this was even more work. Of course, it was a lot of fun being, being a mascot, being carefree and entertaining people. And he, he worked really, really hard for, for, his, uh, uh, for the sports team and for the spectators to make sure they're having fun, they're being entertained. Then over time, it's, you know, I'm not really having fun anymore. I'm on the beck and call of, of, of the sports team, and I've got to go even if I'm sick or tired or, you know, I, I just don't feel like it. But I've got, got to soldier on. Then one day he came back, back home to the car and said, you know, I'm burned out. I'm done. And the car just smiled and said, like, oh, you still got me. We can still go out and have fun. We can go to conventions together. We can go and, and first in whatever we feel like. You don't feel like it, you don't go. But we can go have fun together and call our own shots. What's the point of entertaining others, making sure they're all having fun, if you're not having fun? And so, the code. With that, the uh, he learned, kid learned how to enjoy, enjoy yourself. And the kid pondered that that thought for a moment. And the coach said, "You know, you were always fun." So many years passed. He'd gone to many other conventions, and the coyote was getting older. The kid became a man, and all, but the doubts were setting in. Uh, fursuiting was becoming more prevalent. Lots, loads more cute fursuits are going out there. And even though the coyote was uh, was was handsome back in the day, that there were so many other cute suits, much cuter and such, and he felt like it was yesterday's news. And the kid, the, the guy, he also wanted to, you know, explore more affectionate side. Because well, as first, it's, you're not mascot. You're not limited by a mascot code. You know, you can go out and, 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 and uh, show affection, hug people, and uh, you know, get, help people know that you care. You know, tend, kind of, kind of uh, embrace people. Not exactly what mask got to do. <laughs> the guy was, I, I just want people to love me. So one night, he looked up into the sky and saw the seven stars up in the sky shining down on him, and he made a wish. The second wish. You know, I wish it was charming. I want a really cute fursuit. And Sky granted his wish, and sent him dreams of a charming bunny. It, it wasn't his persona, just the character to be, but it was just dreams of it. it he didn't, how would he make it real? He could see the bunny in his head. Come on, make me real. We're going to have fun. We're going to we're going to we're going to have fun with this. 
So he took all the skill that he made, made the first food, first food, and he built this bunny. And the, the bunny stared back at him, reached out a paw and said, come on, let's have an adventure together. And the bunny was charming. Uh, as bunnies are, you know, going around bouncing floppy ears and all, and she had a cute little tail and being lovable and teasing and all, like, like bunnies do. And he loved going dancing. So one night at a convention, the bunny's flirting with this really big buff wolf. And it's like, oh, he's really handsome and all. And the bunny was just getting lost in the enjoyment of the music. He was just lost in thought, not worrying about anything at all. And, and the wolf is just closing in on him. And finally he's like, hey, bunny, I hear you like snuggling. And the bunny's like, oh, I love snuggling. How about we snuggle right here in the dance floor? The bunny shrieked. And, and he, he twisted and turned and tried to get away. And he finally slipped out and barely made it out of the dance with his tail still attached to him. And he ran back to his room. And the bunny said, uh, said to him, we don't have to flirt and snuggle with everyone. Make sure, you know, when, when you're being attractive, when you feel attractive, make sure you're attracting the people you want to attract. You don't have to love, make everyone love you. You have to learn to love yourself. And he pondered that a bit. And the bunny said, you were always charming. So some more years passed, but the doubts had set in again, the spotlight was fading, the Cody and Bunny were getting older, and the guy was, was feeling forgotten. He spent a lot of time dwelling on what he, what he lacked, you know, about all the new, much more gorgeous clothes things that were out there. And he felt, you know, it felt like yesterday's news, the spotlight had faded. He looked at the coyote bunny and said, you've been great companions so far, but you know, I don't know what I really want. And he sank ever deeper. Then at, at, at one wintry convention, uh, there was a fire alarm, imagine that. And he was pushed out of the cold with thousands of other furries. And it, uh, but despite being in this big crowd, he felt so alone. His coyote and bunny weren't with him. And he felt, he felt, uh. then after the con, he felt, he uh, set off on the long journey home, uh, deep in thought, you know, what, what would, what would it take to get past this? He saw so many of these cute new critters and uh, fursuits that were available up for auction, you know, uh, all these fursuit crushes and people were crushing on them and it's like, oh gosh, I mean, maybe I could adopt one. Maybe that will fix it. I, I just want people to remember me. So on arriving home, he looked up in the sky as the sun was peeking over the horizon and he asked his third wish. I wish it was memorable. I want a fursuit crush. And the desert sky smiled down upon him. And uh, uh, let me pause there. Let me pause a moment there. Technical difficult. I'm trying to juggle too many things in, one, in these great big mitts of mine. In 2015, Made For You posted an auction for a brightly colored ye yellow dog inspired by the citrus beverage Sunny D, with the D standing for Dingo. A heartbreaker born on, on Valentine's Day. And loads of furries were, were commenting saying, oh, he's a fursuit crush. I, 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 I bet this auction's going to break records. He's going to go for so much and they're going to be rich and all. But if you want something bad enough, 
With all your heart, the universe will conspire to make it happen. It was up for a week auction, a week long auction halfway through. Um, the guy put in a bid. He didn't, uh, but the ending of the auction was during a con and he missed it and he, he was the second highest bidder. But as I said, things will happen to conspire to make things happen. The high bid fell through and four months after he made that wish, I landed up on his doorstep. Now, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what it was all about. All I knew was I've got this cheeky little eyebrow thing going. And, um, but So he took me inside and thought that, you know, maybe I'll talk to him and see what he's all about. Because, you know, he didn't come from my dreams. I wasn't from, it was someone else's dream that, that dreamed me up. So I was a blank slate. Could be anybody. Tabula rasa. Blank slate. But all I did was I held out a paw, and he knew what I said immediately. Let's have an adventure together. In, in Aussie culture, the, uh, the concept of the walkabout is a spiritual journey uh, a young adult takes to, in order to pass into manhood, where you go out into the world and find yourself. And in American culture, there's something sort of similar, the, the idea of wanderlust, going out into the, into the world and finding yourself, finding who you are. And so, me and, me and the kid, the guy, we became travel companions. And in order, so I could figure out who I was and he could figure out what was missing. Now, to, to be honest, I, I don't really like the taste of Sunny Me. It's way too sweet for my palate. And <laughs> um, I, I actually take inspiration from the great big ball of light in the sky and the promise of a new day. So as we're traveling, we've got a lot of music playing. and We're searching kind of for a theme song for me. And uh, you know, a couple of things by the Beatles. And uh, he played uh, Sunshine Day by the Brady Bunch. And that, that was a bit too cheesy. So, but uh, one, one line that, uh, there's a song from Sheryl Crow, Soak Up the Sun. There's a line that really stuck with us. It's not having what you want, it's wanting what you've got. You know, take, take stock in what you, what you have going for you. But what really, sang, what really sang to me was the 1966 Bobby Hebb to Sonny. And he sang it to me. Sonny, yesterday my life was filled with rain. Sonny, you smiled at me and relieved the pain. You ever heard the story behind the writing of this song? The, the guy who wrote it, wrote it Bobby Hebb, in, in 1963, it was the day after the JFK assassination that his brother was murdered outside a nightclub. And the, this, this double whammy just hit him so hard and he sought, sought, sought some comfort in writing a song. And the, the idea of taking uh, us having a, a sunny outlook rather than a gloomy one is what really inspired this song and that that really spoke to me and that's kind of what I, where, where I'm coming from the idea of always keep to the sunny side look for the sunny side in life so a couple of weeks later uh, we're going to a first foot first convention for a convention together now he knew loads of people, I didn't know anyone. And so he said, go, go out to the con and you know, have fun. You do. And sure, throw the, that handsome young dingo to the walls, as it were. Let him fend for himself. So I, I, I didn't speak at, at, at the time. I, was, I hadn't found my voice. And I had a badge like this one here that, said, that just said Sunny D on it. And so some people were asking, what kind of, a, what kind of dogo are you? And I didn't speak, so uh, I, I kind of did a, a, a pantomime thing. That, uh, uh, oh. uh, first off, I did a glow, and then spun it around and pointed it underneath and said, yeah, they have to say down under. And they weren't quite getting that. So, you know, after a minute, I could tell that I was totally losing them. And so I finally just. 
Well, they got a mini dingo, we got it. Sometimes you gotta play to those, uh, those stereotypes, I guess. So passing by a panel room, I, I heard a quote that, was, uh, that, that, that also resonated with me. It's from Oscar Wilde. It said, man, man is least himself when speaking in his own person. Give him a mask, he will tell you the truth. When you think about that, imagine what you could get done without yourself second guessing yourself. What you could do without getting in your own way. Another, another, another quote I heard was, uh, yep. when, when an impulse strikes, you've got like five seconds to act on it, otherwise your, your uh, self-consciousness is going to kick in and say, no, that's probably not a good idea. Yep. Sometimes you've just got to, got to follow your gut, you know. That, that. So, If you can be anyone, be yourself. Unless, of course, you can be a dingo, be a dingo. <laughs> so, but everything I tried, I, I had to had to ring true with me inside. Just, you know, if, if I try to be, you know, if, when I first uh, debut, people think of some sort of, you know, gorgeous dingo sex symbol and all. And I, I don't know, I just feel too goofy to be a, some sort of sex symbol. Uh, except maybe to Jira. <laughs> <laughs> So one night around a campfire uh, with a couple other doggos and we're, we're telling stories and, and uh, one is telling a story that he says uh, that his grandfather was telling him a long time ago when he was just a pup. He was teaching him about life. A fight is going on inside me. There's a terrible fight. It is between two wolves. One is evil. He's anger. Envy, greed, guilt, hate, and jealousy. And the other is good. He has joy, peace, love, hope, kindness, and empathy. And the same fight is going on inside you too. And inside of every other person. And the pop thought a moment and asked, But which wolf will win? The one you feed. This one stayed with me for a while. Every day we're presented with, with choices, you know, and, and how do we proceed? Which wolf do we feed? Where do we, where do we put our attention to? And then it occurred to me that, you know, I, I'm getting tangled in my rigging here. Uh, and then it occurred to me, you know, I've, I've got this positive sunny outlook, you know, I can listen and hear the voice of this good wolf and share that with, with my friends, with my mates. And it was around this campfire that I found my voice. It comes from a source of positivity within, unfettered by um, cynicism, cynicism or jadedness, just, just the voice of positivity. We've all, you know, we've all got this inside us. So I went further and shared this positivity, this positive outlook on Twitter, and, and folks first heard my voice on Vine, and I don't know, people seem to like my accent or something. Some lessons that, uh, that came up from that, from this. Yeah, I, I'm sure you've seen the, the shirt, uh, I had a, I've had a shirt uh, that says, uh, good vibes only, but I, I put a little asterisk next to it, because uh, you know, bad things will happen, and uh, positivity isn't, uh, saying, you know, brushing it under the covers and saying everything's fine. No, it's, you know, taking a positive outlook, tackling the things that are wrong, because, you know, you are worth it. You're worth improving. You're worth, you know, getting better. You know, we all need a little boost every now and then. A little reminder saying, reminding us that we're good and kind and clever and, and, and decent and it's we've all got that bit, little bit of sunshine inside us sometimes we have to dig really deep to, to find it but it's there that, and that's what I listen to that's what I share with people because um, I know that ultimately deep down there's there's one person I know who needs to hear that right now 
You know, sharing positivity is a great thing. You know, empathizing with people. You know, share a smile with uh, the, the clerk, a barista. You know, ask them how the day is going. You know, everyone wants to feel like they're a person that they're worthwhile. And you know, if you just smile at a stranger, you, if they make a good, genuine smile, and if they smile back, you really got something there that you've made those. You've got this uh, little connection going that you're both feeling feeling a little bit better. And it's important to share that empathy because you know everyone's fighting a battle that, that no one else can see. You don't know what they're doing, what uh, what they're up to. You know that 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 merging driver who just cuts you off. Maybe on, on the road. Maybe he's uh, he's off to the hospital where his wife wife is in labour. You, know, you never know other people's stories. And everybody else's life is full of full of a rich history as as rich as your own. They're, they're not just drones. You know, everyone's going through their own journey in life. And we've all got. A, we're all in this together. This this pandemic. In this world. And we all we all got to start somewhere. And we're all in different stages within the, our own journey. Consider the popular artist who uh, started out drawing on, you know, light notebook paper in pencil and all during class. But they started somewhere. And be, you know, be patient with yourself as you're going. You know, consider the, the amazing fursuit builder that with their own closet full of uh, fursuit horrors when they first started. You know, that, you know, maybe, they're, maybe they're ashamed of it. Maybe, you know, it's like, this is a sign how far I've come. And you know, ultimately have patience with yourself. Because all you can do, all, all you do is your best. The best you, you can at that moment and given the circumstances. And you just keep at it and practice and you'll get better. You don't need to berate other people to feel better about yourself. The only person you have to feel better than, you have to be better than, is who you were yesterday. There's a note from the Desiderata that uh, you know, I, I hear people that uh, are worried that, you know, was I supposed to be here? Am I a mistake? Am I, I, I don't belong here. And this, this line from the Desiderata just hit me. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees of the stars. You have a right to be here. And, there, and whether or not it's clear to you, no doubt the universe is as unfolding as it should. Think on that a bit. And, you know, uh, my friend, he's, he's occasionally given to thoughts of, you know, jealousy and not being good enough. But I remind him, you know, you don't have to feel that way. Take stock in what you've got. And, you know, suck up that ego. Someone else is doing much better than you are. Feel good for them. Cheer for them. Uh, cheer for their wins and their, what they achieve. And just, it, it's okay. Just because just cause there's, uh, you know, one winner, that doesn't make everyone else losers. A little story from uh, uh, the, the the late conductor Leonard Bernstein that uh, he was once asked, "What's the hardest instrument to play in, in in the orchestra?" And without hesitation, he said, "Second fiddle." I could get lots of people who could play first violin, but if we don't have someone who can play second fiddle with enthusiasm, we have a problem. Without second fiddle, we, we don't have harmony. You know, it's all about you know working together and being part of a you know a common goal. And it's not just about yourself. You know, in order to start a movement, it takes more than a leader. It, it, on their own, a leader can be seen just as a nutshell waving his arms around. And say, Come on, follow me, follow me, follow me. And you know. It takes someone willing to follow, willing to follow them, and the leader to acknowledge them and uplift them and enable them and treat them as you know a peer and an equal to us, uh, and empower them. And soon others will follow, and more and more, and then you've got a movement started. And the guy from the story, the fun coyote, told him to enjoy himself. The cute bunny told him to. Uh, 
to love yourself? And I told them, you've got to believe in yourself. You know, whenever those feelings of self-doubt, worthless or sadness are there, I'm there to counter those thoughts. Essentially, I'm the voice that counters all the doubts that he's got. You know, you've got, you can have that, that feeling within as well. If you listen hard enough, you know, you are worthwhile. Remember that. You're all special in your own way. You've got your own talents and your own, your own path in life. And, I mean, if you're lost, you know, A way to put it, you know, be your, your own best friend. You know, that uh, something that, that occurs to me is that, you know, sometimes we're given, you know, uh, self-defeating thoughts and, and negative self-talk and, and such, you know, that I'm not worth it and all. And you've got to fight those, uh, fight off those, uh, those doubts and just remind yourself that you're worthwhile. You're doing the best you can. If you put your in, in your own effort and. Um, when you listen to take those self-doubting, uh, the negative self-talk, and just flip it around, and imagine you're saying that about a friend of yours. Would that friend still want to be a friend after you, you treat them like that? No. No. And you know, be your own best friend. And so, with my help, he. Uh, he became more aware, caring, and empathic, inspired, and he shared this inspiration with others. And then he sang from the Bobby Hebb tune again. You gave to me your all in all, and now I feel ten feet tall. Sunny one, so true, I love you. And so I told him, you know, I, you were always, always memorable. So I'll leave you with, I'll leave you with this, that Fari Fandom can be a place to give you the courage to define, explore, and improve yourself. And our personas can be our ideals, ideal selves, what we aspire to be, and what we can become. And so ask yourself, who do I want to be? Thank you.